Hi everybody, How, how's it going? I'm uh, going to do a video today on the camera case. I got a request from a person in the UK. His name is Paul, Paulo and he is getting ready to do a adventure ride on this sweet BMW that he just got. Uh, he is going to go from uh, Alaska to New York and like me he uh, loves photography and he was asking me about how I was protecting my cameras. Um, uh, he saw uh, a video I did um, and wanted to know a little bit more about it. So I decided to go ahead and make a, a video and we'll show how I, I did this case. It's pretty simple. There's not a lot to it. Um, so anyways, what I have here is pull away foam. Uh, you can buy this on Amazon.com. So basically what you're going to do is put the foam together. Uh, it'll come out of the case. It's pretty high when you put it together. Um, so don't worry about that. You're going to trim it all. But basically you want to cut it down first to size. And that's 14 by 12. Cut it down to size. It'll actually then go into the case. But you're going to have to trim it because um, the case isn't exactly square. But... Uh, You'll have to cut the corners, and then on the bottom, you'll have to cut it. And if you notice on mine, uh, if you look at the bottom, you can see where I cut it um, on the bottoms and on the corners, so it fits into um, into the case. And then I duct taped it. The reason I did the duct tape was just to keep it all together nice and tight, uh, and it makes it easy to go in and out of the case. Um, so you can see how I did the bottoms. Just kind of hold, uh, you'll just cut it at an angle, and uh, it's pretty simple. And then I used, I put the strings on there because that helps to pull it out. So you can just see it pops right in, and then that part pops into the top of the case. And it fits in there really good. It doesn't come out. Um, and uh, you can see I got two camera bodies that I put into mine. You, know, you can configure this any way you want, but um, I, I have mine with two camera bodies with the lens attached. Um, I think Paulo is going to be doing uh, one body with three different lenses. That shouldn't be a problem. You can do the lens standing up and then the camera body uh, facing down or, or facing up, however you want to do it. It's all up to you. So this foam is really easy to cut. I recommend electric knife uh, if you have one. Uh, if you don't, uh, that's okay. You can use like a, a bread cutting knife. Um, basically what you want to do is the corners. You got to cut those at an angle, 45 degree angle. When I did it, I just eyeballed it. It doesn't really have to be perfect. You just want to get it where it slides in there. I just held it like at a 45 and use the electric knife and then just go right down and cut it. It cuts it like butter. And as you can see there, I just eyeballed that and it goes in. So you do both all four corners and then you have to do the bottom of course um, do the bottom the same way um, then once you have it all done then go ahead and uh, if you can have somebody help you it's a lot easier get everything and just duct tape it the way I did here um, and then the top you can look see you see the top I didn't even cut it straight it looks kind of sloppy if you wanted to get really precise you can you can make a template and then and then go through and really do it correctly or you could even make a hot wire where you cut this but it doesn't have to be that that pretty it's just to protect your your cameras and it because i did a trip and i had my vitamins in the back of uh the bike and within two days they were all powder um so you can tell there's a lot of vibration going on there and this what it, all it does is protect your camera from the vibrations and uh get to where you're going without tearing everything up and it fits in there nice and easy. It can come out when you're done with your trip and you don't want it anymore. Um, you can't go wrong. Of course, I got my net in there, so this isn't fitting in there. But uh, without the net, it just pops right in there and it stays in there. So lessons learned. Um, I take a tripod, and if you're taking all this camera equipment, of course, you will probably want to also. Um, if you uh, take a tripod, I try to get a get a portable one that collapses real small that'll fit up on top of your case. Um, um, they make some pretty good ones, and this one works great with my bigger cameras. I don't have any problems with it. Um, the key, though, 
try to get one that has a case and then or get a case for it and then when you're riding make sure you fasten or lock down everything on the tripod all the knobs turn them until they're tight because they will come loose and they will fall off so that's why i recommend the case um, if they do fall off they're in the case and uh, when you get where you're going at least you can put them back on and didn't lose them and what i do i just go ahead and i tie strap it to the top um, and I, I go through the uh, the hoops on the case that way if it did come loose it wouldn't go anywhere and fall off okay so another option if you didn't want to take all your gear and you really want a camera that's going to take good uh, pictures um, and you want it in raw format there is this like by Sony that I carry with me a lot of times when I don't take all my gear. It's the RX100 uh, 3. They have the RX104 uh, out now. Uh, it's got better video quality. Um, it's a pretty good camera. It shoots in RAW. It has all the features that your um, DLSRs have. It's uh, 20 megapixels. It's got a pop-up viewfinder. Um, I can shoot in aperture mode just like I would normally shoot on my professional type cameras uh, and like I said in raw so you're not going to miss any of those uh, editing opportunities when you get back home. So this is a good option alternative if you don't want to carry the big cameras with you. The only disadvantage is the zoom. The zoom is um, you know it's not a, a, a large zoom so you, you I think it's a uh, 24 to 70 I believe is what it is so um, you lose that option but it's an alternative and something to think about there's a lot of manufacturers that make these type of cameras now that shoot in raw format and they're very compact they range anywhere from going $500 all the way up to $3,000 depending on how fancy you want to get this one here you probably can get it for about 600 now Paula, I hope you find this helpful, and I hope you have a safe trip, and please share with us when you get done. We'd love to hear how it went.